Franken cases have been investigated by Professor Elender Haraldsson of the University of Iceland. He's with a Sri Lankan researcher, Godwin Samararatni. They've come for a further meeting with six-year-old Dilukshi. For the past three years, this little girl has been talking about a previous life as a small child in a district 70 miles away. A life that ended when she fell in a river and drowned. Dilukshi still remembers another set of parents and brothers and sisters. A Colombo newspaper had published Dilukshi's memories before any previous personality was discovered. The story was read by the father of a dead girl who said Dilukshi's account of a drowning matched the life and death of his daughter, Shiromi. The reporter took Dilukshi to the home of the drowned girl where she made several recognitions. We filmed another reunion between Dilukshi and the dead girl's parents. Before the newspaper brought them together, these families were quite unknown to each other. They lived in widely separated parts of the island and are still a little shy with each other. On a previous visit, Shiromi's father gave Dilukshi a silver whistle to match his own. The first time Dilukshi met Shiromi's mother, she said, Mother, I've come home at last. The reporter, Abby Parler, said Dilukshi had recognized some of the dead girl's toys and books. According to Professor Haraldson, this was useless as a scientific test. Shiromi's possessions should have been mixed up with objects that had not belonged to her. As it was, anything that Dilukshi pointed to could be taken as recognition of something belonging to Shiromi. Ten-year-old Shiromi had drowned in this river near her home a year before Dilukshi was born. Dilukshi led the way to the riverbank and showed where she remembered falling in and striking her head on a rock. It was the exact spot where Shiromi drowned in 1983. When Dilukshi visited here for the first time with the reporter Abby Parler, she identified the same place. The looks had further stated that there had been a footbridge across the stream and, uh, and close to that footbridge was uh, her father's paddy fields. And when we think of uh, Shiromi, her father, Mr. Anatonga, he, had, he owns these uh, paddy fields and there had in fact been a footbridge here over the stream. So uh, all these statements concerning the stream, they fit the life of Shiromi. Part of Dilukshi's story was verified during filming. She remembered a shop near Shiromi's home run by a youth known as Thin Boy. The only likely shop had been closed for years. Why Professor Harrelson stopped to take pictures, but unexpectedly found himself being introduced to someone. Yeah. 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 So this is the this is Thin Boy. Thin boy this yeah. is Hin Malik. Yes, we used to have the shop here. A bonus for Professor Haraldson was that the thin boy remembered the drowned girl, Shiromi. She used to come into his shop. Haraldson regards this as a strong case. In a tropical downpour in Sri Lanka, 
a father escorts his daughters home from school. Ten-year-old Tsubashini has a fear of storms. During another downpour when she was three, the terrified child told her parents about a landslip on a mountainside during a thunderstorm. It was on a tea plantation where, she said, she had a different father and mother. Subashini no longer has these memories, only a fear of storms. Her mother remembers what she said. When Subashini was three, she demonstrated to her parents how tea was picked. She described the bushes in detail, although none grow where she lives. She said the tea pickers were Tamils, except for her own family of Singhalese Buddhists. They lived in lines, which her middle-class parents didn't understand. But lines are the tea workers' name for their terrace shacks. They lived in Gampola, 60 miles away. Stevenson's researchers found there had indeed been a disaster on a tea plantation at Gampola two years before Subashini was born. There was lightning and thunder, and at about that 8 p.m., the rocks above this came down with mud and water, and it slipped down here, covering all these line rooms, half the line rooms, and it went down below about 200 to 250 yards below. I think about 28 people died on that, but unfortunately, we were able to recover only about 13 bodies. Documents from the disaster inquiry confirm that the victims were Tamils, except for one family of Singhalese Buddhists. They had a seven-year-old daughter, Devi Malika, who seemed to match Subashini's statements. What happened to that family? There were five living at that time in that house. All were killed. These two who survived were outside on that special day. Devi Malika has a surviving brother and sister. Subashini's first visit here was abandoned when the child became hysterical with fear. Later, she met these two, and they believe she is their sister, reborn. Devi Malika's body was never recovered. Some of Subashini's details of life on this tea plantation were unverifiable. But the researchers say 25 of her 32 statements match the life of Devi Malika. Along with the other cases, is this story convincing evidence for reincarnation? I think where the evidence has led us is that whereas formerly a belief in reincarnation depended on uh, religious traditions, scriptures for certain countries, oral traditions for others, now at least one can point to uh, evidence. And the evidence is not flawless. Uh, every case has some weakness or other. But there is an accumulation of quite strong evidence from, I would say, a hundred cases. Even for those hundred cases, there are alternative possibilities of interpretation, but reincarnation is, is certainly a, a plausible. I would say in some cases, it's for me the most compelling interpretation, even though it's not the only one.
به 